Good, good evening, everybody. I am Drew Carter from the Office of Admission, and I am so excited to be with you here tonight. Um, I am even more excited to be sharing tonight's webinar with my coworker, Olivia. Hi, Olivia. And uh, we are very excited to talk to you today about um, essay topics. Um, a few uh, housekeeping notes before we get started. Uh, number one, uh, closed captioning is available, button at the bottom of your screen. Number two, uh, please put any and all questions in the Q&A. We're gonna do our best to answer as many of those questions when we get to the end of the PowerPoint. So without uh, further ado, let's get started. Uh, let's see the, the, our poll results first. Um, interesting to see how everybody feels about their essay, um, where you're at in the timeline. Looks like um, plenty of people are, are still at the start of the process, which is great. And i um, interested to see uh, some themes that people are thinking about as well. We're going to hopefully touch on all these uh, topics tonight. Um, so let's get started. Let's go ahead and uh, start about why. Let's really start at the beginning because I think we take it for granted that you have to write an essay when you get to, when you get to apply to college. But let's start with the, more, the most basic question, and that is why do colleges require an essay? And really, when the admissions officer is reading your essay, they're really thinking about two things. Um, they have two questions to answer. The first question is, how well does this applicant write? And that tends to be a binary answer, right? Yes, you can write and no, you can't. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've spent enough time writing your essay and that you've shared it with the right kind of proofreaders. Guidance counselors and English teachers tend to be the best proofreaders for your essay. The second question that admissions officers have to answer is what can they learn about this applicant? And, and that's why the essay needs to be about you not uh, a recycled term paper from US history from junior year. And that's uh, an important thing to think about when you're thinking about your topic. We're also gonna spend a little time at the beginning talking about busting some common essay myths that some of you may have heard about or read about from people in your lives or just on the internet. The first one is that admission offices don't actually read essays, so it doesn't matter what you write. Uh, this is certainly the case with some colleges and some programs around the country, but particularly at selective colleges like Holy Cross, we read every single essay that is submitted to us. We read it twice, uh, at least twice, sometimes more than twice, depending on the application. Um, so it's really important that you do put some effort into what you're writing and into deciding what you want to write about, uh, because we will read it and we will take it into account when we are reviewing your application and deciding whether you would be a good fit at Holy Cross. And many other admission offices do the same. The second myth is that your essay has to be written about an impressive topic, uh, like a, a big journey that you've been on or an impressive moment in your life or an incredible hardship that you've been through. That's absolutely not the case. Drew and I have both read our fair share of excellent essays about things as simple as post-it notes or water bottles or um, crossing the street. Or, um, there's so many simple things that you can write about and an impressive topic does not necessarily create an impressive essay. And that's something that we're going to talk about a little bit later in this presentation as well. The third one is that your essay needs to sound sophisticated so that you can convince the admission office that you're ready for college. Um, certainly we do want you to, you know, use proper language as much as possible, the language that will work best for you. Uh, but also remember, we know that you all are largely 17, 18, 19 years old when you're applying to college. We want you to sound like you. Uh, so trying to write within your own voice is a really important aspect of the writing process. Uh, please try not to go to the, the thesaurus too much uh, because oftentimes we can tell that that's not really your authentic voice. We wanna hear you in your essay. And the last one is that an outstanding essay is your ticket to admission. An essay is incredibly important to your application, but it's not everything. So an amazing essay isn't necessarily going to make up for a really poor transcript uh, or no effort on your activities list or no effort from your recommendation letters you know, that aren't going to really show that you are a strong candidate. So every piece of your application matters and the college essay is just one of those pieces. Let's talk about some things that your essay should do, okay? The first thing is that your essay should do is be applicable to all colleges. And when you're applying through the Common Application, understand that that Common App Essay or Coalition Application Essay is gonna be submitted to all the colleges to which you apply. So you'll wanna leave out any specific references to any college. 
Um, so no specific college references as a part of your essay. The second thing your essay should do is it should be written in your own voice. It is totally fine to work with proofreaders, but help. They, we want them to help you shape your language, not um, insert their language for yours. The second, or the third thing your essay should do is uh, add sort of personality to your application. Your application comes to us and it's sort of flat. It's sort of two dimensional and black and white. Your essay really helps to add color and depth and perspective and personality to your application. That's why we want it written in your voice. The last thing you need to think about with your essay is, is in, the, in great essays, we see a sort of a surface level and a deeper level meaning. And what I mean by that is um, a student who write, chooses to write their essay about um, a, a swim race that his team was a part of. And, um, you know, really the, 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 the topic is that swim meet, but really the deeper meaning is a lesson learned about overcoming defeat or uh, being gracious in victory. So um, the, the topic can also have a deeper meaning behind it as well. We'll also talk about a few things that your essay should not do. I think it's important to keep in mind those as well. Uh, first and foremost, your essay should not focus completely on someone else. We see this pretty frequently with people who are answering the prompt about a person of influence or someone who's important to your lives. Um, that's a great topic to choose, but make sure if you're doing something like that, that you're always coming back to you. Um, and the same thing with a topic that might be, you know, object focused or place focused, that your essay could be primarily about that, that object or place, but it should always come back to who you are and, uh, you know, what you've learned from this experience, what you love about this object or place, anything like that. So make sure that your essay is, is generally always going to be focused on you. That's really what you have to come back to. Secondly, your essay should not repeat your entire resume or activities list. The reason that we ask for you to submit a, an activities list or resume is so that we can read it in that format. Uh, certainly you can use a, a specific activity or a specific experience as the topic for your essay. And I saw in the poll earlier that a lot of you are planning to potentially use that type of topic. Just make sure that you are being focused with that, that you're picking one activity, one experience, one um, moment in time to use for your essay, rather than just listing, I did this, and then I did this, and then I did this, and then I did this, because we already read that by the time we get to your essay. The next thing to consider is that your essay should not include profanity unless it is essential, I repeat, essential to the story. The main reason why we give this advice is that you really don't know who will be reading your essay, and you don't know what types of sensibilities they have or what types of language preferences they have. Uh, certainly, I, I can imagine there are plenty of admission counselors that would read some profanity in an essay and not bat an eye at it. But there are others for whom that might seem degrading or disturbing to them. So you don't know who's going to read your essay. You don't know what they, how they feel about profanity. So just leave it out whenever possible. And then the last thing, uh, which is similar to what we were talking about uh, before with what your essay should do, your essay should not be recycled from a class assignment. It should not be a history paper or an English paper or even a personal essay that you might have written for an English class, uh, which some of you may have done. Uh, it should be a new essay that you are creating that also, you know, not only will show about who you are and really add to your application, uh, but also when you're creating something new rather than going back to something you've already written, there's a, a different sense of energy to that essay. And we want to harness that energy when we read your application. So how do you know if you've got the right topic? Um, not a right topic, but the right topic for you. Well, one way to know that is that that topic is fun to write about because the reality is, is that if you have fun writing that essay, we will absolutely have fun reading this essay. And one way to think about this is to think about the reaction of your reader. The, re the reaction of the admissions officer is likely to mirror your sensation when writing that essay. So if you're bored writing it, we'll be bored reading it. If it's like pulling hair to write that essay, it's gonna be like pulling hair to read that essay. That's the downside, right? The upside, the good news is that if, it's, if you find fun, if you find meaning, if you find mojo, we will find all of those things when we read it. And that, this all originates with the choice of your topic. So choose a topic that is meaningful or that is fun or that you just find some mojo in. That's exactly what we will find as well. 
the right essay topic for you is also layered, right? It, it has a, a surface level and a deeper meaning. So, and that can be something as simple as soccer, right? You want to write your essay about soccer, great. But that deeper meaning should really be about your connection to the sport and what it means for you and how you've developed because of that sport. And then finally, the right essay topic for you is reflective. Like we hope to learn a little something about you. Um, again, if your topic is soccer, not just about the sport, but about why it's important to you and, and the changes that have come from that, you're involved in that sport and why you think those changes have originated specifically from that sport. So there are lots of possible right topics for you. There isn't just one. There are so many topics you could really write a great essay on because those topics would meet all of those standards. So the way that we want to spend the bulk of the rest of this uh, webinar as well is going through a detailed uh, t discussion of all of the Common App essay prompts that are currently available to students who will be uh, applying this fall. And so one thing that we'd like you to do is take a look at this poll and fill out a sense of which topics, uh, which of the following topics you think would be potentially okay to write about or not okay to write about uh, as part of your Common App essay. So we'll leave that up for just a moment. And uh, as we're continuing to move forward, uh, we're going to be asking each other questions about the different prompts and also these topics that we're, are up on the screen right now about you know, when is it a good time to write about something like this? When might it not be a good time to write about something like this? So my first question is going to be for Drew. Um, for this Common App essay prompt, the first one that talks about a background identity or interest that your application would be incomplete without. Um, give us your, your take, Drew. Yeah, I think, you know, sometimes we've seen this really work is when um, students talk about their family and, you know, their, their family unit, maybe where their family's from and influences within their family. Um, that certainly meets that sort of background and identity. And sometimes with interests and talent, it, um, it speaks to a specific interest they have maybe outside of the classroom. The, the, the mistakes that could happen with this essay prompt is when people spend too much time describing the thing, um, the flute, or rather than describing their interest and their talent and their love in playing the flute. So it is fine to talk about that topic, but make sure that you're, you're showing parts of yourself as well. Um, now, what about the second one, Olivia? Um, the second one's about lessons learned from obstacles and things like that. Have you seen examples where that can work? Yeah, absolutely. I've seen some amazing examples that have to do with big and small obstacles that people have overcome in their lives. And the best ones will always focus more on the second half of this prompt of talking about what they learned from the experience. So it's really important to take that to heart if you're going to answer this Common App essay prompt, uh, because it's, it's not going to work if you spend a lot of time talking about the challenge, the setback, the failure that you experienced, and very little time talking about how you've grown and who you've become as a result of that experience. Uh, so it's very important to include a lot of detail and a lot of specifics around you know, how this challenge or setback has changed you as a person. And that's going to create the strongest essay for this topic. Now, the next one, Drew, is about reflecting on a time when you question or challenge a belief or idea. Um, what do you think about this one? This, this to me feels like a little bit um, where if you read this um, and there's an obvious moment where you question a belief or an idea, right? Um, sometimes it's based on school, sometimes it's based on activity, sometimes it's based on the family. To me, I think this answer would be obvious to you when you read this question, but the truth is, if nothing comes to mind, if nothing pops up, this may not be the best topic for you. Um, but if there is an obvious topic, you wanna to talk about uh, growth here, right? As you uh, really questioned or challenged the belief, talk about the, 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 uh, the origin of that idea within yourself, and then talk about how you changed because of the outcome. Um, let's take a look at the next one. What about um, reflecting on something that someone has done for you made you happy, happy or thankful in a surprising way. I love that little piece about it being a surprising way. What do you think about that one, Olivia? Yeah, I think absolutely the surprising way part of this is a really important part of the prompt that uh, there are so many things in our day-to-day -day lives that we all should be thankful for. You know, little things that our family and friends do for us or kindnesses that strangers show to us. Uh, but definitely focusing on that idea of being surprised by either the action that caused you to be thankful or the fact that you were thankful for that action. I think that can end at a very 
interesting new layer to this answering this essay prompt. I think this is one that can be very easy to write a super basic, super okay essay about where you say, you know, I'm really grateful that my mom always tucked me in at night, every night before I went to bed. And this has, a, has motivated me to want to be a good parent someday. Um, that can be a very simple version of this type of essay. So what I would challenge any of you who are considering this prompt to focus on is to find something that it feels unique to you. That's something that, you know, many people may not have experienced or that you may not have experienced for a long time and then suddenly you did, um, but also focusing on specifics. It's incredibly important to get specific about this because it's very easy for a lot of students to talk about gratitude and say, you know, this, this kind thing that someone did for me makes me want to be kind to others. That's great, but it doesn't tell us that much about how you want to be kind to others. In what way do you want to be kind to others? Uh, so definitely trying to find the specifics in particularly the affection and motivation of this prompt will be very important for anyone who wants to answer this one. Let's move on to the next one. We're talking about an accomplishment, an event or a realization that sparked a period of new understanding and personal growth. Drew, what do you think? I don't know, I'm intimidated just reading this one. <laughs> to me, when I, when I think about this, not only the idea of personal growth, but an accomplishment, a, a realization. This one scares me just a little bit, uh, but if it doesn't scare you, then I say, go for it. Um, and really talk about, there should be a, a beginning place um, a moment, right? An accomplishment, an event, and a realization, and then an ending place, that new understanding of, of yourself or others. I think this can really work. Um, I hope you're not as scared of this topic as I am, but uh, it gives me the, the queasies just a little bit. All right, next on the list, um, Olivia, what do you think about uh, describing a, a topic or idea, a concept that you find engaging that makes you lose track of time? Yeah, I absolutely love this topic because I think it it plays so well to those folks who have a specific idea or a specific activity that they just can't stop doing. Uh, and there's a lot of passion involved in this topic. So if you're to choose this topic, it's so important for you to really select something that fits what they're talking about in the prompt. You lose all track of time. You are captivated by this thing or this idea. So if you don't have anything in your life that really you feel that level of passion for, maybe don't choose this topic because it could be, again, easy to write an okay essay about this to say, I really love playing the violin and I've practiced it for a really long time and I wanna continue playing the violin and I'm really excited to do that in college. That's okay. It doesn't really give us a sense of passion, you know, but the same, you know, the same topic could be a totally different topic written by a student who has an absolute obsession with playing the violin. And, you know, you're listening to violin music all the time. You're constantly trying to practice to get better. You're working on your fingering on the violin all the time. Uh, that type of passion can play so well as a part of uh, answering this topic. All right. And then we're going to look at the last one, which is uh, uh, kind of a broad topic, share an essay or on any topic of your choice. So this is your go-to option if none of the other prompts are interesting to you. Uh, Drew, what, do you, what advice do you have for students who might be considering this option? I mean, I think one thing to keep in mind is that the essay prompts that came before this, these aren't assignments for you. Those are really sort of um, questions that are there to be helpful. If you're really struggling coming up with a topic on your own, you can refer to those questions as, as an aid to help you come up with your own topic. Um, really, I think most students end up writing on this, the, the topic of your own choice. Um, and I think that's what mostly we see. It's very rare for us to read your essay and refer back to what question you were answering. So use those questions simply as an aid. Um, and really, I think this, this is where you start on a topic of choice really think about the, something that you would like to write about. And whether or not it fits into one of those questions up above is certainly not necessary. Um, as we move on to our next slide, I wanna share the poll results. Um, you know, we were talking about a, a whole bunch of topics there that may be okay to write about or may not be okay. Uh, it's interesting to see everybody's um, feelings on that. Um, all of the above at 27%, none of the above at 6%. So very interesting to see those results. Um, now, Olivia and I will weigh in on whether or not we think it's an okay topic to write. Let's look at the first one. What do you think about writing about dating and relationships, Olivia? 
Yeah, I think there are, again, there are ways that this can be done well. There's ways that it can be done poorly. Um, most often, I think we see quite a lot of poor essays around dating and relationships because they tend to focus on, you know, just a story about my ex-boyfriend did this, my ex-girlfriend did this, or um, I have discovered that I'm in love with this person. Uh, and it can oftentimes be a very messy topic to go into, particularly as part of a college essay, in knowing that the person that you are now writing this essay is you know, not necessarily the person that you will be by the time you graduate from college, that what you're writing in this essay in a lot of cases could be kind of embarrassing for you to think about a few years from now when you go back to it. Um, so I always would encourage people to be careful if you do want to write about dating or relationships. There are some ways that this can be done well though. And particularly my thought process is dating or a relationship as a specific context um, excuse me, I believe that I may have lost my video. And we're back. Um, so if you're using dating or relationships as a specific context to talk about personal growth or change that you've experienced, then this can be a powerful way of writing about this topic. And the second one that we're looking at, Drew, we're talking about divorce. This is another really messy topic. So what are some ways that this could be a good or not good topic for students to use? Actually, I think um, if, you are, if your family um, or someone you know has experienced divorce, I think that's an okay thing to talk about. Just understand that the length of this is 650 words. And when you take on really big themes, you tend to run out of words pretty quickly, really life-changing themes. So if, if that, this theme of um, divorce or even some of the ones we might see soon is the theme you really wanna tackle, maybe choose a small moment the moment you learned your parents were going to get a divorce. Maybe focus on that moment. Uh, you might want to pick a smaller moment within a big theme so you don't run out of words too quickly. Next on the list is tragedies and hardships. I think this is often what students think they're supposed to write about. Uh, Olivia, what do you think about that? Yeah, we actually saw the highest yes rate um, on our poll for tragedies and hardship. So I'm not surprised to see that a lot of students are considering that as a potential to essay topic. Uh, again, it's one of those that I think are, it's very important to talk about growth. Um, this is absolutely a topic that you are welcome to write about. I think that tragedies and hardship are a way that you grow. And for a young person to have experienced something that is tragic or something that is incredibly difficult, that changes you as a person and it helps to create the person that you are today. So it's absolutely an okay essay topic to use. The, the big thing that I, the big piece of advice that I would give with regard to this is to not focus again just on the experience that you had to say this bad thing happened to me or i i experienced this tragedy what you really need to get to in that essay is what you learned from this experience how have you grown because of this um, has this made you a stronger person has this you know did this experience make you fearful of something for a long time that you had to overcome then. Um, so it gives you an opportunity to really talk about who you are today and how that tragedy or hardship helped you become the person that you are today. The next one is a very controversial topic and I think actually had the lowest yes rate on our poll. Uh, so Drew, what do you think about writing about political opinions? Yeah, I mean, I think the you, the poll results reveal that I think people are a little afraid of maybe writing about this. And, and that fear comes from the reality is that you don't know who the reader is. You don't know what, what um, political perspective they come from. All I would say about this is, I think this is a topic that is okay to write about if the focus of the essay is you. If you wanna talk about uh, a belief that you have and what you've learned about yourself and maybe how you've changed and how you've learned about others because of that, I think that's okay. But if it really is just an opinion piece, then you've probably gone off the rails and haven't really, um, haven't really accomplished the goal of what the essay as a part of your application is. Uh, next on the list is sports. I think some people are really drawn to that, Olivia, and some people really run away from it because they think they're not supposed to write about it. What do you think? Yeah, well, we've used a lot of sports examples already in this webinar, so I hope that all of you are getting a good sense already of how you can write about sports well. Um, so many of our, of our applicants are participating in sports on some type of level, uh, and so it's certainly an essay topic that you can write about, but again, it's one that you want to be careful of because it's very easy to have that topic be quite 
you know, one dimensional or, you know, just focusing on the surface level. Um, I think the most common sports essay that I read that I, I find very basic is the, I didn't make the team. So then I practiced a lot. So then I made the team and I was really proud of myself. Uh, and if you want to write about a similar experience, it's really important to differentiate yourself in that type of essay um, to, to go into more specifics about, you know, what type of, of work you did to create, you know, to get onto this team, what it means to you to do that. Um, and the same thing with any type of sports essay is that it shouldn't just be entirely about, I was excited about this team or I was excited about winning the championship or whatever it might be. But it also needs to be, again, about this sense of growth, this sense of experience that you've had, and this sense of identity that you might have formed around sports as well. So those are some of the ways that you can write successfully about sports in your college essay. Another one that can be very difficult for us to talk about is personal flaws. Um, Drew, why don't you talk to me a little bit about that one? Sure. Um, I think sometimes students feel like they're not allowed to sort of reveal any uh, personal flaws in their essay because the, the admissions office is supposed to think they're perfect. I think parents really caution students away from revealing any sort of flaws. Um, one thing I want you to know is that we know we're all human, you're human, we're human, and it is okay to talk about a flaw, especially when it's going to probably show growth and show um, ways in which you've changed and ways in which um, you're sort of authentic and humble to realize that, you know, none of us are perfect. So I think flaws can be okay when dealt with appropriately. Uh, let's see, what's our next topic here, Olivia? Uh, how about, um, what do you think about getting into trouble or breaking rules? What do you think about that as a topic? Sure. Um, getting into trouble and breaking rules can be a very interesting topic to, to have to talk about. Um, it's really important, again, with this type of topic to focus on growth focus on who you are today, how this has changed you. Um, some students may feel the need to write about an experience that they had of getting in trouble or breaking rules, possibly because they had to report it on, your, on their application or their school felt the need to report it when they applied to colleges. So uh, this is information that will often come up as part of your application process. Um, even if you don't write about it in your essay. So it can be really helpful uh, to be able to you know, address that in your essay and provide your own experience. So um, oftentimes when we see these types of essays, they have something to do with a plagiarism experience that the student might have had, an experience cheating on an exam or a paper. Um, sometimes it might have to do with you know, illicit materials or, or things like that at school or skipping class. Uh, and again, I think what's important to focus on with these types of essays is growth. Who are you now after having that, had that experience and how have you changed as a result of perhaps getting in trouble for doing whatever it is that you did? Uh, so this is another one that you have to be very careful about because you don't want to give admission counselors the impression that, um, you know, that you're a rule breaker, the impression that you are a delinquent of some kind. Um, like you want to give them the impression that you made a mistake and you learned from it. And that's something that can be really powerful. And then the last one that we have on here is talking about health and medical conditions, which is a little bit further up on the list here. Um, Drew, talk to me about including health and medical conditions in your essay. Is that okay? I think if if that's if there's a, a, a theme there that you can demonstrate to help uh, the admissions office understand who you are and, and uh, who you have become, I think it's totally fine to use that as but your top level topic, uh, as long as you have that deeper meaning. Um, if it re really the, what you're trying to do is, is help the admissions office understand uh, what you've been through, just understand that there's a portion on the common application for um, additional information that, that, that you might want to describe your special circumstances there. Uh, when in doubt, I think um, just check with your guidance counselor, and I think they'll probably give you some pretty good advice on this one. So what can happen often, though, is that students are still stuck and they still don't have an idea about what they should write about. And some of you might have just sat through this webinar and said, that's all great, Olivia and Drew, but I still don't know what I'm going to write my essay about. If that is you, then here's what you need to do. Here's a few ideas. And I know it's uh, July over the summer and you're not looking for writing exercises, but here's some things you can do. Make a list, okay? Seven things you enjoy. Food, people, events, TV shows, activities. It doesn't matter. Just make this list. Seven things you enjoy. 
The next thing you need to do is make a list of three face palm moments, okay? I would refer to them as head slap moments, but I'm old, so you call them a, a face palm moment. Totally fine. Make a list of three of those. I'll tell you, I went to pick up pizza tonight, and my son walked into a glass door, okay? He's already got his first face palm moment for his common app essay later on. Um, your next list, make a list of four books you loved, whether you read them in school or outside of school, doesn't matter. Four books you loved, short, serious, long, doesn't matter. The last thing, make on a list, two times that you couldn't stop laughing. Just you started laughing for whatever reason, doesn't matter, and you just couldn't stop. The point of these lists now is after you've made these quick lists, this shouldn't take you more than like 10 minutes. Go back and look at this list. Somewhere on that list is your essay topic. Somewhere, probably even more than just one place. There are probably two or three great essay topics for you to write about on those lists. So if you're really still stuck, make these lists and I promise you, you will find more than just one essay topic that is great for you. So we've got a lot of questions coming into the Q&A and I know um, Nicole has answered some of those behind the screen, but uh, I wanna um, ask uh, Olivia, maybe I'll ask you, do you see um, some overused essay topics, ones that are just used too much that students should stay away from? Yeah, some of them are ones that we've already mentioned a little bit. I will say the sports essay that I didn't make the team, that I practiced a lot, now I've made the team. We see that a lot. Um, that's a pretty common one. Uh, we've seen a lot of essays lately about, you know, specific uh, books that a student might have read or uh, ways that they have been affected by COVID. That's become a very common essay topic. Um, not to say that you shouldn't write about any of these things. That's what I'm saying. It's like you, there are a lot of ways that you can do these well and that you can do them in a unique way. So don't don't get too afraid of any of these topics. Um, I'm trying to think of another couple of overused essay topics that I've read a lot. The sports one is one that always comes to mind, you know, that I made the team, I made the championship, whatever, um, that sort of thing. Um, I don't know, Drew, do you have any that you'd want to add? I mean, I think the, the, the person of influence is, is used often. I wouldn't call it overused. I mean, I, you sure. know, the example I use is grandma a lot. We read a lot of grandma essays. Um, and it's totally fine to write about your grandma. Like, I, I love my grandma, so I would love to read about your grandma. You just want to make sure that you... Uh, are the, the the goal of the essay, right? We learn about you and not just about your grandmother. So maybe about how she's influenced you and ways in which you've changed and learned from your relationship with her. Um, here's a, just a really obvious question, Olivia. Do you have to state what your essay topic is in the essay? No, absolutely not. Um, there is a ton of subtext that you can use when you're writing an essay. It absolutely does not have to be explicit. Um, the last thing that we would want is for any of you to write an essay at the top that says, this essay is about my grandmother, or this essay is about my service trip that I did with my school. Um, a lot of times when you're writing your first draft of your essay, it's very easy for you to create this sort of introduction paragraph to say, you know, I don't love to talk about hardships that I've experienced, but this moment was very important to my life and has changed me as a person. Um, you can take all of that out. You don't need to start with any of that. Uh, it's really important for you to just throw us into the story, whatever story it is that you are telling, and we will pick up on what that topic is based on your writing and based on the experiences that you're sharing with us. So we've got a great question here. Um, what are some really good or bad essays you still remember? And I think this is, I, I keep a list every year of my favorite essays. And usually there's about 10 or 15 on the list. Um, I've done this job for uh, over a decade and a half. So 10 or 15 per year uh, times 15, 16 years, you can do the math about how many uh, great essays I've read and written down. Um, and I think that when I look back at this list, what is, what is really obvious is that some, it's probably about 15% of those essays are on really big topics, really life-changing moments in students' lives, right? Uh, a death in the family or a house fire or parents' divorce. But more often than not, the topics, about 85% of the best essays I've read were about smaller topics, smaller moments, right? Uh, swimming in the ocean one day, a favorite pair of jeans, um, why I love Starbucks, um, and I'll tell you, my favorite one I read this year, and I actually looked back at it just the other day, uh, just this past week, um, a student wrote about how her dad is sometimes kind of embarrassing. 
That was my favorite essay this year. And that, if not, if nothing else, it proves that you don't have to have a really traumatic life-changing event to write your essay about. This student chose to write about something we've all probably experienced at some point in our lives. Um, let me see another question for you here, Olivia. Um, is there an effective way in which a, a person can combine a few aspects of topics into one essay? What do you think about going at different topics, multiple topics within one essay? This is hard to do because you only have 650 words to use for your Common App or Coalition App essay. Um, so you just don't have the time or space really to go deep into multiple different topics. That being said, if you can find a common theme that connects multiple things that you're interested in writing about, so maybe you have a connection between uh, your your love for theater and also your grandmother and also your relationship with your older brother or you know something like that so you might actually put those things together because they all have to do with the same theme which could be you know following in someone's footsteps footsteps versus uh forging your own path i'm just sort of inventing this as we go but there are ways that you can combine those things together uh, you just want to make sure that you always have just one common theme that's going through the essay um, and this is a way that you can really use that surface level versus deeper level meaning that we've been talking about, that you might have multiple surface level topics that you're using, but the deeper meaning is always the same underneath all of those topics. Olivia, how do you feel about uh, COVID or quarantine essays? Yeah, that's something that I that we saw quite a bit this year and that I imagine we'll continue to see next year. Uh, there's a wide variety of COVID and quarantine essays that I've read, I think that our entire team has read. So there are a lot of ways to, to do this well. And I think, again, what it really comes down to is talking about an experience or a moment or a person or something that's very important to you. So if you had an important experience during COVID uh, that you probably otherwise would not have had without the pandemic, Pandemic, then that's certainly something that you can write about. Uh, the one thing that I would try to avoid with those types of essays is to basically write about a, a sort of basic topic with that regard. So COVID came and my school shut down and online learning was hard. Um, a, that was an experience that a lot of people around the country had. So it's not really going to differentiate your essay at all. Um, so if you have a, a specific instance, though, that was a very important moment for you throughout the quarantine or something like that, it's totally fine to write about that. I think some of the best ones I read were about, about smaller moments, about like um, a renewed importance of family dinners and uh, one student who um, uh, picked up sewing with her mother during their, when they were quarantined early on. And so some of those smaller moments were effective ones. We have one uh, question about um, how do you avoid bragging in your essay? And I wanna say that that is a really common uh, fear we have from students. But one thing you need to understand is the perspective of your entire application. Uh, about a third of your entire application file is people bragging about you. That's what your guidance counselor is gonna do. That's what your teacher is gonna do. Who's gonna write that recommendation. That's what your other teacher is gonna do when they write their recommendation. They spend you know paragraphs upon paragraphs bragging about you telling us why you're you are a great student why you are a great person why you will be a great student and a great person at the college level and that might be uncomfortable to to feel that like all these people are bragging about you to us um, or maybe it's like awesome to feel but what it should do is really take that need off the table you have you you should feel no need to brag about yourself because that's already been accomplished if that comes out as a part of your essay, when you talk about growth and the person you've become and the person you wanna be, that's fine. But feel no need to convince us that you should be admitted because that's exactly the point of your guidance counselor recommendation and both of your teacher recommendations. So I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions here. Um, okay, how about this one, Olivia? Understand that writing about activities is not recommended. I'm not sure about that. But would you recommend uh, writing about why they chose to start an activity? What about just like writing about a club or a sport or a musical or theater interest? What do you think about that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and again, I want to stress that when we say don't repeat your activities list, we're not saying you can't write about an activity. We're just saying we don't want the list of in ninth grade, I did this. In 10th grade, I did this. In 11th grade, I did this. In 12th grade, I did this. 
we're going to read that already. Um, but we love it when you go in depth about an activity that you have discovered that you love. And that could be something that could be the experience of starting a new activity. And maybe you're really nervous to start this thing that you've never done before. And maybe you made a friend during your first experience with that who helped you sh help show you the ropes. And now you are someone who is showing someone else the ropes. Like there are a lot of ways that you can um, really do that type of essay well. So I certainly would recommend that if you enjoy a specific activity that you do and you want to write about how you got started with it, um, definitely write about that. Just make sure that you talk a lot about what it means to you and why that was such an important moment for you to start this activity. Okay, last question of the night and we'll end on a light one. Should you try and incorporate humor into the essay or should you keep it serious? Okay, I, we'll, we'll both weigh in on this. My feeling is um, if you are funny, it is okay to, try to, to incorporate some level of humor in your essay. This is definitely the kind of essay though you wanna make sure you run by your guidance counselor and run by your English teacher and just check to make sure that um, they think you're funny as well or maybe more appropriately that they think your humor has worked in this essay. What do you think about humor in the essay, Olivia? Oh, I 100% agree with exactly what you said, Drew. Um, humor can be awesome. When, when we read a funny essay that makes us laugh out loud, it can sometimes make your whole day as, a, as an admission counselor, especially when you're reading essay after essay after essay for day after day after day, which is what we do during our reading season. Uh, an, an essay that incorporates humor well can completely pull us out of any funk we might be in and just make, make you know, give us a sense of joy. Uh, but absolutely, it's so important to recruit proofreaders and editors for your essay, because if you're using humor, sometimes people might not get it. So recruit people that know you, like your friends or your siblings, but also make sure that you show your essay to someone who doesn't, maybe doesn't know your sense of humor as well, um, because that person will be able to tell you whether they, as a, a you know, unbiased third party, whether they understand the humor and whether they think we would as well. Next Sunday, 7 p.m., we're doing a, another webinar, episode two of this five-part series. It's all about how to highlight uh, your activities, your involvement outside of the classroom, how to make that part of your application really stand out. This is an, an awesome five-part series we're doing over the next five weeks. Thank you so much for coming. The link to sign up for next Sunday's webinar is, is in the chat. We hope you'll join us. Um, thanks again for coming tonight. Um, have fun with this essay. Find meaning. Um, we are so excited to read what you have to write. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next week.